Let's talk a little bit about Marcus Rashford. Uh, it's I understand. I see the smirk on your face, Lee. It's it's a it's a conversation that seems to pop up every few months, every single season. An argument as to whether uh, it, it's either an argument about what is Marcus Rashford's best position, or it's a discussion about is Marcus Rashford good enough for Manchester United, or it's also an argument about what's going on with Marcus Rashford. Why is he struggling? Why is he um, not picking up? the pace that he built a couple of seasons ago in that incredible goal-scoring run. Today against Brighton, again, it was 60 minutes on the pitch. Barely anything that worth remembering that he did on the pitch and he was eventually brought off. Where does Marcus Rashford go from here? Uh, it, it's a difficult one. Um, today, again, another underwhelming performance. Uh, we watched him a couple of seasons ago, absolutely electrifying. He was unplayable yeah. at, at times. Uh, his pace, his power, uh, absolutely electrifying, unbelievable feat. You, you see a lot of um, interviews from, from Manchester United players saying who's, who's the most skillful, who's the most tricky. It's always Marcus Rashford who's yeah. got the best feet, most ability. Um, but for some reason, it's just not happening for him. And, I, and I've, I've been in that position where, as a winger, you're a little bit low in confidence. I've also been at the top of my confidence. And, and I've always thought that when, you, when you're low in confidence, the first thing you do is declare intent with the fullback. Mm. With the pace he's got, you knock it 10 yards down the line, you race the fullback, the worst thing you're gonna, you're gonna get is a throw in 10 yards down the line, your team have moved up, the crowd have got a bit of a lift, and, and you get a bit of a lift. And, and with Marcus, when I watch him, he seems to want to stop the ball and, and want to have a think about what he's gonna do before he's even gonna do it. Mm. If he just knocked it and let his ability take over, it, 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 things would happen for him. But he just seems to, he seems to idle through games. He doesn't seem to, to sprint very often. He doesn't seem to cover ground. He doesn't seem... We saw him a couple of times today. Didn't quite work out for him and, and his arms are getting waved in the air. And, and it just... It's, 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 it's all got to be what's going on between his ears. And I don't know who's talking to him or who he's listening to or who he's not listening to. But the, the ability is there. It's just he's not making the right decisions at the right time at the moment. I mean, Gary, there was an interview with Ben White <coughs> and he was asked... Um, who are some of the toughest players that you've ever gone up against? And he put a list of three players. Right up on that list was Marcus Rashford. Because yeah. once upon a time, when he was absolutely on, on, on song, the sight of Marcus Rashford running at you at full speed has got yeah. to be one of the scariest sights yeah. in the Premier League. But we don't get to see anything close to it these days. Well, th there's no question, because we've seen it on many occasions and two seasons ago, throughout the season. We've seen it with Rashford playing for England in the past as well. Um, he's got the ability, he's got the talent, he's got the pace, he's got the attitude, but it's not there at the moment. So I'm, I'm with Lee personally. It's, it's what's going on between his ears. What is his thought process at this moment in time? I don't know. I'm sure Manchester United have a couple of sports psychologists. Is he working with one of those, for example? Because, you know, Anybody and everybody can change the day by their thinking. Yeah. So if you believe it's going to be a good day, you're right. If you believe it's going to be a bad day, you're right. Because it's your thinking that, that dictates, it manifests what you're going to do. Um, you know, I, I don't know. You know Lee was a, a great player and in a wide position and he's, he's expressed well, you know, how difficult it can be when your confidence is high, your confidence is low and what changes that as well. Um, but I would, you know, I'm not a Manchester United fan. I, it's a great club. They've done fantastically over the years. But personally, I would love to see Marcus Rashford back at his best mm. because I love football. Do, do you reckon, Lee, that he feels a bit of a extra pressure on his shoulders because he's, he's a local lad, um, came through the, the ranks, there's a lot of eyeballs on him. Do you feel that that pressure sometimes gets to him and he, he struggles to manage it, even especially through the, the rough parts and the difficult parts? I mean, we talk about Harry Maguire. He has been abused. He has been mocked mm. all over social media. But he's somehow been able to weather that storm and recover a bit of form. And these days, he's getting his fair share of plaudits from fans and pundits alike. But with Marcus Rashford, do you think he struggles <coughs> through that, that negativity or the negative period? Uh, if, if he's going to be uh, affected by pressure and, and peer pressure, I, I think he's at, he's at the wrong club and in the wrong job. Mm. He's at the biggest club, well, one of the biggest clubs in the world, if not the biggest. 
Uh, he's done it before, he's come through the ranks, so he knows what the club's about. He's a Manchester boy, he knows everything about the club. Um, and and that's, that's no reason or excuse for him to struggle with, with the ability he's got. Um, he, he should grab the ball by the horns and say, right, I'm going to go and destroy this fullback today. Mm. And, and every time he gets it, he should be running as quick as he can up to full speed and trying to beat fullbacks and, and trying to create chances. If he doesn't get past the fullback, then there's a midfielder or, a, or our fullback sweeps up and gives it him again to go and do it again. That, that's, that's what a, w a winger doesn't beat yeah. the fullback every time. It's a, it's a law of averages. Uh, yeah. and, and he's got to. He's got to He's got to lay the gauntlet down a little bit more. He seems like he's frightened to make a mistake, he's frightened to do this, but then when, he, when someone gives him a bad ball, his arms are in the air and he's just strolling around. He doesn't cover ground like, like he should be doing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a weird situation for him at the moment, for me. I, I know it's still the second game of the season and we don't want to you know, sound like we are, we are judging a player this early into a season, but with Marcus Rashford, this was supposed to be the revival campaign because he spent the summer away from England. He wasn't at the Euros. He had a, a full break for him to sort of get away from football, um, revitalise his, his mood, his headspace. Had a full pre-season as well with Manchester United. This was supposed to be the season where he gets back to his best, proves himself at a, at a club of Manchester United stature. But just two games into the season, we're seeing similar patterns that we saw with him last year. So the questions that are continuing to be raised is, should Manchester United at some point, perhaps not this season, it might not happen any time between now and when the window closes, but should there be a genuine discussion at boardroom level within Manchester United as to whether Marcus Rashford has a long-term future at this club or should they seek to potentially you know, offload him and, and give him a better environment to perhaps bounce back? For, for me personally, it is about the staff and the coaches getting the best out of a player. Mm. Now, if the player doesn't want to give his best, then there's not much you can do as a coach. But I truly believe that Rashford wants to give his best. Mm. So it's down to the coaches to get it out. Do you know, if I was playing on that park with Rashford, I would just keep giving him the ball. If I'm playing left back, I'd give him the ball and I'd encourage him to be positive. If I'm playing in midfield, I'd give Rashford the ball and I'd be screaming at him, get at the full back. You know, I, I would, so has he got teammates around him that are giving him the right message mm. as well? Um, so there's the coaching staff, there's his teammates, but ultimately it is down to him. So Rashford has been a great player. He has not been a great player on a consistent enough basis, mm. in my opinion, based on the quality and the attributes that he has as a footballer and as an athlete. And, and you, you would also think the way Ten Hag approaches the game and approaches picking a team, he goes on how people perform in training. Yeah. So you would think that Marcus Rashford is absolutely turning it on and destroying people in training yeah. because he wouldn't get in the first 11. Mm. He's, he's just brought Garnaccio on, who's totally gone at the fullback every time he does it. He's scored a goal, OK, it was offside, but he's putting himself in that position. So if, if Marcus Rashford is not doing it in training, you would think that Garnaccio would start ahead of him, but he's not. So he's obviously doing something in training that the manager likes, but it's not working yeah. for him on a match day. I, yeah. I think if you want a player to come good, you have to believe in him and give him that platform. Mm. How long is that platform? How many games is that platform? That's the Ten Hag, Manchester United dilemma yeah. with Marcus Rashford. A small bit of detail, but when, when Marcus Rashford came out and wrote that piece that he published on the Players' Tribune, I think at some point where he spoke about, you know, uh, he disagreed with fans questioning his commitment to the club. Mm. He, he spoke about his love for Manchester United and, and just how much he desperately wants to do well <clears> and <throat> see the club go back to where it absolutely belongs. Every time he does something like that, the one individual that's constantly popping up in the, in the comment section and giving him the encouragement is always Bruno Fernandes. And perhaps he just needs more characters like that in and around him to just constantly push him into a, a, a headspace that's perhaps... Mm a lot more positive. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anybody in the club that will, get, will be giving him a hard time. That's the thing. I think everybody will be encouraging him. Uh, that They'll be telling him what to do and, and how to approach things. Different people will come with different ideas. It's whether he wants to listen, take mm. it on board, and whether, you know, he's, like, like we said before, what's, what's going on between his ears is, is what's most important at the moment. And he's, he's, it's, it's just not working for him. Whatever he's trying at the moment, he needs to try something else because this... We expect him to come out all guns black. After last season was so disappointing for him. Uh, you expect him to come out, all guns blazing, like you said, a real good season, a real good summer, 
nice rest, really good pre-season, come out flying, and, and he's just seemed to have gone back into his shell, and he seems like he, he was like the same as last season.